when I read what Warren Buffett has wrote and I look at Snowflake's numbers, I can only arrive at one conclusion, and that's that Snowflake stock is... What's up, everybody? My name is John Quast, and shout out to all of you guys who are trying to improve your financial lives by taking action and doing the hard work. That's what this channel is about. And in today's video, we're talking about Snowflake. Snowflake is a cloud company that went public in September of 2020, and it was the largest software IPO of all time. And despite its already large size when it went public, the stock more than doubled in its first day of trading, and before long had a valuation of over $100 billion. So what does Snowflake do? Snowflake is a company that helps businesses store, search, analyze, and even sell their data. As you can imagine, this is a very important industry. Everything is generating more data than ever, and it's getting harder and harder to make data-driven decisions because you have to make sense of the data that you have. For these reasons, this is a very big and growing market. Snowflake's management believes that this will be a $248 billion opportunity by the year 2026. However, the market opportunity isn't why the market was all abuzz about Snowflake's IPO. The market was excited because it came to light that Berkshire Hathaway, the company run by Warren Buffett, had invested $250 million. Now, I can hear you say, so what? Berkshire Hathaway has over a hundred billion dollars. So 250 million in Snowflake's IPO is really peanuts for that company. That's true. However, investing in Snowflake's stock at the IPO broke three rules that Warren Buffett typically follows when he invests. Number one, Warren Buffett doesn't invest in technology. Typically. That's because Warren Buffett likes to stay inside what he calls his circle of competence. Basically, he wants to be sure of what a business's future cash flows are going to look like, and he can only feel confident in predicting that in certain businesses. One of his favorite is chewing gum or Coca Cola stock. When it comes to technology, he doesn't really know much about it, and therefore he feels very uncomfortable predicting the future cash flows, which is why he considers technology outside his circle, and therefore he doesn't typically invest. Number two, Warren Buffett typically doesn't invest in unprofitable companies. And when Snowflake went public, it was burning through a lot of cash. And number three, typically speaking, Warren Buffett does not invest in an IPO or initial public offering. This is when the stock first goes on the stock market. He likes to sit back and wait, see how the business is going to perform before he invests in such a company. Snowflake stock is inside of tech, it was unprofitable, and it was an IPO. Those are three things that Warren Buffett normally would not invest in, and yet he broke his rules for Snowflake. Now, in reality, it probably actually wasn't Warren Buffett making this decision. Rather, when Snowflake went public, its CEO, Frank Slootman, said that he had been talking with Todd Combs a lot from Berkshire Hathaway. Todd Combs is an investment officer with Berkshire Hathaway. Many believe that he is going to replace Warren Buffett when he eventually retires. And Todd Combs is in charge of Geico with Berkshire Hathaway. And it turns out that Geico was a Snowflake customer. So Geico is very familiar with Snowflake's product and therefore it's very likely that he was the one making this decision. Still, Berkshire Hathaway is still very much Warren Buffett's company. Therefore, you would expect an investment in Snowflake to follow Warren Buffett's typical rules. And that points to Snowflake being an exceptional company. Indeed, Snowflake is an exceptional business. In its fiscal 2022, which is basically calendar year 2021, its revenue grew 106% year over year to 1.2 billion. Now you might be able to find companies with a better growth rate, but I'd argue that you won't find many growing that fast at that size. And the growth is pretty much keeping up here in fiscal 2023 through the first three quarters. Revenue is up 77% year over year to about 1.5 billion. Now it's not just about revenue growth. It's also impressive how Snowflake is growing its revenue. First, it's adding a ton of customers at an impressive rate. At the end of fiscal 2021, it had 4,139 customers. As of the most recent quarter, it had 7,292 customers. Second, these customers are spending more over time and a lot more. So its net revenue retention rate was 165% in the most recent quarter. Basically think of it this way. If you're one of Snowflake's customers and you're spending $100, Snowflake comes to you and says, hey, we have this other product. Would you like to buy that? And you think, I'm already spending $100. What does the new product cost? And they say $65. 
You say, you know what? Yeah, I'll take that other product. Now you're spending 165 where you were spending 100. That's what a net revenue retention rate of 165% means. So more customers and those customers are spending more over time, leading to incredible revenue growth. More than just revenue growth, it is also becoming more profitable. We can look at the gross margin. In fiscal 2021, its gross margin was 59%. In the most recent quarter, the third quarter of fiscal 2023, its gross margin had jumped to 66%. And also, Snowflake has gone from burning cash at the time of its IPO to being free cash flow positive with a very impressive 12% free cash flow margin. So let's add all this up. A big market opportunity, incredible revenue growth, good and improving gross margin, quickly improving free cash flow margin, all of this adds up and points to Snowflake being an incredible business. So an excellent business, a stock that has lost about two thirds of its value. Berkshire Hathaway is already a buyer. Why isn't it buying this stock hand over fist right now? After all, Warren Buffett says he loves to buy stock in excellent companies when it goes on sale. And the answer to that is, I believe it's very unlikely that Snowflake stock is going to beat the market over the next five to six years. And here's why. Let's consider that the stock market goes up on average about 10% every single year. Now, if you add that up over five years, that's not 50% returns because it compounds on itself. It's actually 61% returns. So if you're picking a stock for the next five years, you're really looking to do better than somewhere in there, 61% returns or something thereabouts. And really getting average returns is easy. You can just buy an index fund and call it a day. No thought involved and no need to go through tons and tons of companies trying to figure out which are the best ones. Really, if you're picking a stock, you want to do not just better than average, but enough better than average to justify all the time that you're putting into picking stocks. For me, I'm normally looking for a stock that can double over five years. That's 100% returns and is probably going to beat the stock market average by a big enough of a percent that it justifies all the time that I put in looking for such an opportunity. So that's where I'm coming from with Snowflake stock. It's about a 45 billion company right now as I record this video. So I'm saying if it's going to beat the market, it would need to become basically a $90 billion company in the next five, six years. Now, when it comes to Snowflake's growth going forward, management has been very helpful in giving us its own projections for the business. So it's going all the way out with its projections to fiscal 2029, which is basically calendar year 2028 or six full years from now. Snowflake's management believes that it can generate $10 billion of revenue at a 25% free cash flow margin. Under that assumption, it would generate $2.5 billion in free cash flow in fiscal 2029. Let's look at that just very simplistically. A $90 billion company generating $2.5 billion in free cash flow, it would be trading at 36 times its hypothetical free cash flow in 2028. That's a very pricey valuation. A cheap valuation would be somewhere around 10 times free cash flow. Perhaps an average valuation would be around 20. Therefore, 36 times that cash flow is a very expensive stock. Will Snowflake stock be trading at a premium valuation in calendar year 2028? It's likely. Management thinks it'll still be growing its top line at 30% a year and it would be very profitable. So yeah, it might trade at a premium valuation. But is that something that gives investors a large margin of safety if they buy the stock today? I don't believe it does. In the 1985 letter to shareholders, Warren Buffett had this to say about growth. For the investor, a too high purchase price for the stock of an excellent company can undo the effects of a subsequent decade of favorable business developments. I think that's what we're looking at here with Snowflake stock. Definitely an excellent company, definitely in for a decade of good results. But what is the purchase price today? It's a very high purchase price and could undo all of that good. Therefore, when I read what Warren Buffett has wrote and I look at Snowflake's numbers, I can only arrive at one conclusion, and that's that Snowflake stock is still overvalued today, even down over 60%. And I would give it low chances of beating the market over the next six years. That's that I do believe that Snowflake is a stock that investors should keep an eye on. As we've said, that this is an excellent company and I want to be invested in excellent companies at the right price. Keep it on your list, it's something to watch. For me personally, if it was to fall to the 70 to $80 per share range in 2023, I would be a buyer at that price. I'm curious what you believe is a fair price for Snowflake stock. Go ahead and drop that in the comments, leave a like, subscribe, and if you want to know more about stocks, please check out this video that I did on Amazon.